This video is all about the cell biology topic of specialised cells. By the end of the video, you should understand what is meant by specialisation and be able to describe how sperm cells, nerve cells, muscle cells and red blood cells in animals are specialised, as well as palisade mesophyll cells, root hair cells and xylem and phloem cells in plants. You're hopefully already familiar with the general structure of animal cells and plant cells. You can look back at the previous video if you need a refresher, but to recap, both animal cells and plant cells consist of a fluid outer layer called the cell membrane, and this is wrapped around a gel-like substance called cytoplasm where most of the chemical reactions in the cell take place. Within this cytoplasm are a number of other subcellular structures. There's a nucleus containing the genetic information wrapped in a membrane, a number of mitochondria to release energy in a process called aerobic respiration, and small structures called ribosomes, which use the recipe of the genetic code to synthesize proteins according to what the cell needs. In addition, we expect plant cells to have a cellulose cell wall for additional strength and support, chloroplasts, which contain a pigment called chlorophyll, which absorbs light energy, which the plant then uses to make glucose in photosynthesis, and a permanent vacuole, which stores cell sap. The truth is, however, that these diagrams don't represent all of the cells in a multicellular animal or plant. Very few of the cells actually look exactly like this. Instead, they're specialised in some way. When we say that a cell is specialised, what this means is that its physical structure has been changed in order to make it better adapted to its particular function or job. As you know, your body contains lots of different cell types, which all have different activities that they need to do, and so sometimes this means that they need to look different to each other. This might mean that they have more or fewer of a particular subcellular structure, depending on whether or not that's actually useful to them. Or it might mean that they have an alternative shape. For instance, they might have a curved shape to increase the surface area, in order to increase the speed with which they can absorb soluble molecules like sugars or oxygen. One big difference between animals and plants is the point at which this specialisation occurs. In animals, specialisation happens at a very early stage, so by the time that an animal is born, most of the cells in the body are already specialised to a particular type. Examples of specialised cells in animals include sperm cells, nerve cells, muscle cells and red blood cells, and we'll look at how exactly they're adapted in a second. In plants, this specialisation happens much, much later, and throughout their lifetime, plants retain specialised cells called meristems, which are able to differentiate to form lots of different types of specialised cell. Examples of specialised cells in plants include palisade mesophyll cells, root hair cells, and xylem and phloem cells, and we'll look at these in a second as well. Sperm cells are specialised in a number of ways to make them better adapted to carry out their function, in other words, fertilising an egg cell. Firstly, they have a flagellum, or tail, and this enables those cells to swim in order to meet the egg. Secondly, they contain a large number of mitochondria. Even though we find mitochondria in all eukaryotic cells, the presence of large numbers here mean that the cell has access to a lot of energy, and it's going to need this in order to reach that egg cell. When the sperm cell reaches the egg cell, it needs to penetrate it so that the two nuclei can fuse and fertilisation can take place. In order to help with this, the head of the sperm cell contains something called an acrosome, which has lots of enzymes in it which are going to break down the wall of the egg and allow the two to merge. A nerve cell, or neuron, is also specialised to its function, but in quite different ways to a sperm cell. Firstly, along its axon, there's something called a myelin sheath. Myelin is an electrical insulator, and basically what this means is that the electrical impulse is able to jump from node to node, and this speeds up the speed with which that electrical impulse is transferred. The branched dendrites around the cell body of the neuron allow it to interact with lots and lots of different cells, so rather than one nerve cell only being able to join up with a single other one, it can join with hundreds, and so one impulse can be propagated across the whole neural network. Like the sperm cell, the neuron also has a lot of mitochondria because it needs a lot of energy in order to transfer those electrical impulses. Another example of a specialised animal cell is a muscle cell. As you can see, again, there are lots and lots of mitochondria because a lot of energy is required in order for these muscle cells to continuously contract. Also, muscle cells have quite a long, thin shape, and this means that as they contract and therefore expand, they have room to expand into. Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body to all of the different tissues. 
They have a concave shape which increases their surface area and therefore increases how quickly they're able to absorb oxygen. And also they don't contain a nucleus because a nucleus is quite a large structure which takes up quite a lot of room. So by not having one, they have far more room for the pigment haemoglobin which needs to bind to oxygen. Our first specialised plant cell looks quite similar to the generic plant cell that you would draw if you were comparing animals and plants. This is a palisade mesophyll cell and it's found quite near to the top of the leaf. Its function is photosynthesis. These are the cells in the leaf that do the majority of absorbing the light in order for plants to be able to make their own food. As a result they need a high number of chloroplasts because as we know it's the chlorophyll in the chloroplasts that will actually absorb the light. Also, they have quite a tall, thin, rectangular shape, and that means that it's possible to pack lots of cells into the same tissue. Because they're quite tall and thin, there's quite a good chance that by the time the light has made it through the whole cell, it will have hit one of those chloroplasts along the way. Root hair cells cover the surface of plant roots, and they help the plant to more effectively absorb water and also mineral ions like nitrates and magnesium. They don't contain any chloroplasts because they're under the ground and so there's no light available for them to absorb and so it's just a waste of resources to put chloroplasts in them. They have quite a specific shape and this is to increase their surface area because this will increase the speed with which materials diffuse into the cell. Also, these are living cells and they contain lots of mitochondria as well. When the plant is trying to absorb something that's relatively scarce, then it may need to use active transport, and this requires a lot of energy, so again, having lots of mitochondria is crucial here. Substances are transported around plants by the xylem and phloem. The xylem are responsible for transporting water and also soluble minerals in a process called transpiration. The xylem are dead vessels, and they're reinforced with a woody substance called lignin. There are no divisions within the vessel, so it's very easy for water and the minerals that are dissolved in it to travel from the roots up to the leaves and out in what's called the transpiration stream. In contrast to transpiration, which only happens in one direction, translocation, in which sugars are passed around the plant, goes in all directions at once. Sugars are constantly being moved from the leaves to all the different parts of the plant. This is an active process, and so it requires living cells. Again, they're going to need lots of mitochondria to be able to do this. These living cells are supported by companion cells, cells which sit alongside and provide additional energy and resources for the phloem cells. At the end of each cell, there's something called a sieve tube element. In other words, there's a porous plate that it's possible for substances such as sugar to pass through. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you now know a little bit more about how animal cells and plant cells can be specialised. If you did find this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more biology videos coming soon.